Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Spacecast 2006. And you're probably wondering, well, why aren't you in the spaceship? Well, really, I felt the spaceship's got a little boring, but I will be, t I'll be the games I'll be talking about because we're nearing the end of my first year on YouTube. So the games I'll be talking about will be Tez Minecraft World up until up and up to FNAF Security Breach. So, very much short and simple. Ted's funny enough. Ted Ted's a uh, Minecraft world. There's actually t there's actually uh, is actually this world I'm on now. But as as I said about other my other you know Minecraft playthroughs, they never were exactly successful until recently. I'm I'm you know planning on come come getting back to uh, doing the Minecraft videos again because they were really fun to do. And you know a lot of you know, and I still did get a lot more, a lot of uh, excitement out of it. But I still get some excitement out of it. But this one, you know, for now has just been regarded. It's my own personal, you know, Minecraft world where I can do whatever I want on it. You know, for Christ's sake, like you know, this is impeccably good timing because, like, if you look at like you know what I've done with like with the world, then you can see that you know I've. I'm a lot happier. This is better as my respite for you know, because I spoke about this before when I spoke about my break I had. You know, YouTube's kind of been the most funnest, but also very uh, stressful, and especially coming to the uh, the, the you, know, you know reflecting. On the games I played, and you know, you know, because this period of my life was, you know, the last was the was the last year of you know education for me. It was the last of everything, you know, but it was the beginning of something new, and you know, the mistakes made, you know, and along with the mistakes made, and how that's formed the channel for what it is now, where you know, where even with you know. And I, and, I, and I said this about, you know, the way in in my art, the way I've drew Ted, you know, since the beginning to now, you know. Ted's a different part, you know, Ted's, Ted is, look, looks completely different. He still has his defining features, he still has his things, but it took some time for him to really find himself. Well, at least, and in a way, as I was, as I was about to say, it was kind of my way of, you know, trying to find me, trying to find myself, you know, because I never, I've never spoken about this too in depth, and I really didn't, you know, didn't really want, didn't really want to, and, you know, and I can, and I'll tell you why, it's mainly because, you know, the issues I had at hand are very, are very, you know, in depthly private. And quite frankly, you know, it's just nobody's business. But, you know, I keep saying you know, uh, it's, but after what, what I went on before ever starting YouTube, starting this channel was, as, as I said before, a risk. But it also was a, was very much a, saving point where I could try and be someone else which was the, the least unha was the most unhealthiest thing to do and I soon realized that where where you know trying to be this person and really Ted Ted will always be a reflection of me but there's some stuff that like you know me as a human being doesn't you know you know, we're the same person, but, you know, some stuff of what, what, you know, of what it is, is that, of what, what it is, is that, you know, because, I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm still negative, but I never ever, you know, project that, mainly because I don't want to, you know, sound like an absolute sad ass, and that's why, you know, I really do, didn't like filming, the videos where I spoke about, you know, my breaks and how I was feeling because 
in a way, it's, in a way, I always get this thing where it's just kind of like, just shut up, man. You sound like a whiny bitch. You sound like a whining bitch. You know, stop whining and just get on with it. You know, life's not that bad. But I can't do that to myself because that's not fair. You know, to say or do because you'll drive yourself mad. And even though I am filming this on, you know, Autism Awareness Day, I even kind of said it. You know, I were, you know, if you're feeling something, you don't have to, you know, distribute it privately. I, I only do it because, you know, I feel it's kind of like a courtesy where it's sort of kind of like, you know, this is what's up, this is what's going on with me. But some stuff I prefer to keep private, mainly because it's private. But when, when you know, when I made this world, like, the house didn't look that way. The house was very different. It's all made out of the same parts. Like, you know, I took all the... Everything but the roof was used. So, like, all the glass was the same, you know. But I felt like the house looked a little too bland. So I decided that I'd kind of make this. And it's quite... It's quite good. It's one of my... Actually, I did use the, some of the stairs. I used it for this. And also, same storage room as well. If you look in those videos, like, the storage room is in the exact same place. But, a lot more boxes, because I've required a lot more stuff. But, and, uh, I've never been asked this, but, I might as well say, the reason why I use this for talks is because it's, you know, it's a really convenient, like, like, well, world I've built, and it's really, you know, one of my most favourite things. Which to some people would seem like, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, I've got plenty of Minecraft worlds, but to me, you know, to me, to me it sort of, you know, saved my, saved my life, because I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you honestly, like, as a kid, I used to play video games all the time until, you know, my console was broken. And I kind of had to kind of, you know, occupy myself in other ways where, you know, I, I went out a lot more often. I... Uh... I got into music. You know, and I sort of stepped away from video games. I still played them once in a while, but I never really had the same... You know, the same interest as I used to have. You know, it was more about music for me, and in some ways it still is, but I've, but, you know, yeah, I, I said this in, in the first episode talking about, you know, my realisation of, you know, of very much, you know, of, of the boredness and the loneliness that I felt, and in some ways still do feel. You know, I'll, t I'll tell you one thing, like, I don't have a, I don't have a social group. My, my private life is very very uh boring like you know i i don't party i've you know i've never stepped out of you know like i've never you know hung out with like mates and like in a very long time for like you know where like you know it's either gone successfully and in a way you know like i don't really get many like you know like i you know of course i, I talk to lucifer a lot you know he's sort of the only person i really talk to but you know but in a, in a way you know you know doing youtube and stuff like that has also you know has never affected anything for me like I've I've had like my fair share. I've I've had like some like not so nice comments, and I've never deleted those. Like at least I perceive them as not so nice. You know, like really, you know, with having autism, like you know, sometimes I can never really get what people are trying to. If people are you know, are you know making fun of me or it's banter or anything like that or you know just just anything really. Come on, block it off. Fuck. There we are.
got there in the end. But still though, it, you know, it's never affected anything. You know, like, I, you know, I wish that I had, I still, I still knew, you know, I had friends outside of, you know, doing YouTube. That just hasn't happened yet, you know, there's no one who's interested in, you know, you know, hanging out really, or, you know, anything like that. And that's not me trying to, you know, by any cries, but that's just the truth. That's just the truth of my, very much my situation and my reality. That is it. Wow, I've really gone in depth for this. But the... But the main, but the main point I'm trying to get across here is that... Is that this has been the most fun, funnest thing to do, but it's not, it's just, you know, for me it just doesn't feel like something that I want to do forever. And if I do, then, it, you know, you know, I hope, I hope, you know, it's, it can, you know, still fulfill me and, you know, fill me over, you know, as much fulfillment as it does, but, you know. When when I'm when something's sort of done for me, it's done. Like I sort of had that with bands and stuff like that, where you know, I've you know I've never been you know reinvited to like you know any bands that I was in, mainly because they all split up and stuff. But I know I know with you know some stuff is like when I'm done with something, I'm done. You know, it's sort of it's kind of like when you hear a bell. You sort of know that something's over. It's like a... I don't know, it's just... I just always sort of kind of tell when something's over. It's not over yet for me, at all. I'm not bored in do of doing this. I still, I still love the interaction with people who comment and view my content and, you know... And enjoy that I have the that I have you know the plans to kind of branch out and you know because I never because when when starting YouTube like I never would have thought I would end up a podcast it doesn't matter if it's big to me you know you know it doesn't matter if we just talk nonsense I'm having fun I love what I'm doing you know as much as you know you know as much as some people might think well you can't you can't do something because it's not, you know, because you don't have the best mic. You don't have the best, you know, video camera. That doesn't matter. Start now. Do what, you know, do do what you love. Because if you start out, because failing is the way to, is the key. The more the fail, the more failure, the more you'll, more you'll learn, learn, overcome those failures to create a bigger success. You know, like I, you know, I even said this during during you know the old the uh, the first couple of episodes talking about you know being ginger air and how much I don't really identify with that person anymore. You know, it's it will always still be me. You know, I'll, I'll but you know, it also still be Ted, but it's not, but it's not, you know, the Ted of today. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds really like corny and pretentious, but really, that's the truth. Though it's just not who I am now. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but it's not who I am. And really, and really, overall, what I've learned is that. Is that, is that with this giving me as much film, fulfillment during my first year of doing this, I, I I'd never I'd never want to take it back. Like I've I'm not wasting my time. I'm not unhappy. You know it it makes me feel happy to do it to release the videos. Now more than ever seems as I'm getting you know, some attention, because 
the views never never bothered me in the beginning because I wasn't getting any views. It's kind of it's funny that I've you know it's a good analogy for it, and it's actually true to life. Where when I was a kid, uh, I was not particularly cool in school. You know, I was you know you know completely you know like I just was not cool. You know, I liked you know like like heavy metal music and you know uh and you know doctor who this was before i just liked things that nobody else really liked that much i was you know into old movies and you know i liked you know star wars a lot of people like star wars but i just was not i wasn't into sports and that was really the things that kind of drew me drew me out from a crowd where i was not cool but I soon realised that why try to act why 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 act like them when really all they'll all they ever do is just put you down all they ever do is kind of say you know like get out of here you can't sit with us because it's simple you know they'll, they'll never be cool you'll never be cool to them and in 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 another way they won't be cool for you cool to you because if they were that cool to you. They would have, you know, they would have, you know, allowed you to sit with them. So, so if you if you've never if you've never been at the cool kids table, there's nothing to be cool about. There's no, you know, there's no like doubt about what you what you're doing or what you want to do. But I've, but that that's that's all I have to really say for that. That was quite a long. Uh, talk, but moving on. Ah, yes, Five Nights at Freddy's, the first one. Now, what can I say about Five Nights at Freddy's? That one was another one that was requested. I'd requested for do it f to do it for a long time. I'd done this location, and you know, I, I, you know, and I, and I was asked to do it lots of times by someone who. Someone who was, you know, like a massive fan of, fan of mine, and I, and very much because I had, because I said this before, like I'd grown up watching, you know, like the first FNAF videos, that were, you know, that were truly popular. So, of course, Markiplier, and I never, I like, I liked watching them as a child, and I liked, you know, the lore, but, you know, as a kid, to me, like. You know, I couldn't, I had to stop myself because I'd watch so too much of it and give myself nightmares and give myself, you know, not trauma, but I'd just get unsettled. I wouldn't be able to sleep if I had like a creak or stuff, you know, and this was, you know, and I think a lot of kids had this at the time where like, you know, just the whole over overactive ima imagination, but it it remind but I always remember this clear memory. It was in my old house. Uh, I, I, I used to share very much. I was on a, I I used to sleep on a bump bed, and my sister would be on the bottom, as such, and I'd be on the top. And one night, I really had to pee, and I woke up and. I didn't, I, you know, it was my eyes playing trick, tricks on me, but, like, some, I don't know how it was done, but it's like the night had, like, sh shifted something. And I thought I saw, like, you know, like, Chica, who, of course, is the chicken. I thought I saw Chica, like, standing outside of my bathroom, which I think about today, and it sounds absolutely ridiculous. Like, funny enough, like, it kind of, you know, I'm tempted to, like, draw a picture of it. Of just, you know, like, me, just, like, sat in bed. Oh, this, you know, I couldn't sleep. Like, I would have even had to, like, wet the bed, which I was not going to do. At all. I was not going to wet, wet the bed. But, uh... Get on with it. Like, that's when I soon figured out that this was really, truthfully unhealthy for me. Unhealthy for me. That this is like stopping me wanting to go to the toilet. This just isn't right. 
And even like if it, it even you know sounds a bit petty talking about it now, but it was my first. It was my first time that I actually showed the, at least from what from what I've learned that it was like a good way to show, you know, to stop myself from you know interactive interacting with things that were unhealthy for me, you know, and it was just a game. It wasn't it wasn't real and I knew and I knew it wasn't real but the thought of it being real was the thing that was terrifying to me but talking about you know the the game uh yeah it was a lot of fun to do I never finished it quite frankly because I got bored because I've said this before about FNAF you know I like the law I think it's one of the most genius like most genius uh, ideas ever made. Yeah, I think, I think you know, it's really good, and it's you know, and of course it, it, it's getting its own movie. It might not be a good movie, but it's a big deal if like something like that's getting a movie. But regarding, but you know, but but otherwise than that though, like. I just don't enjoy playing the game so much. Like, it's scary, and I don't like scariness. Like, I like playing them, but I don't like the fact that it's scary. But, you know, it makes for good content, and... I, I, you know, I love doing it. But I don't like the aspect of, you know, having to be stuck in one position, not having any movement, having to always be following patterns... You know, it's just not my sort of thing. It's not my sort of thing. It's not fun to do. And I'll just get bored and I'll just, you know, I'll lose energy. For it. So. that That's really it for, for you know, for my playthrough for half one. And it was quite po popular. It was popular. It was popular to do. It was, it was popular to upload. It's got, like... You know, tw 30 to, you know, 10 views. And it was fun to do. Ah, yes. Until Dawn. This was the official final playthrough I did. I will talk about, you know, the other ones I did. The other ones I did, like, you know, like, um, like you know, a couple months after. But... On with the chase, but Until Dawn was also was also fun to do. That one was, you know, because very much during Halloween, it's you know, I feel I f I think it's the best time for me to play horror games because, of course, it'd be it's Halloween, and that's when it becomes the most popular. But with Until Dawn, it was very much you know the aspect of making choices in a horror situation, of that feeling of you know you know scream or I know what you did last summer, you know. And, Mixed in with uh, mixed in with the Blair Witch Project, and it's that one was fun to do, especially you know because I played it again for another playthrough that I called Until Death, where very much I tried to get all the characters killed because, funny enough, with Until Dawn I managed to get every you know everyone survived, everyone lived, but Josh, Josh, Josh is. Uh, Josh is the only character that is the most difficult to actually, like, get, I think, like, a decent ending for him. Like, all his endings are bad. It's very, quite tragic, but... In one way or another... That was also, that was also quite fun to do, because it was the playthrough I did... Like, I think, like, the paper I was doing when I first started college, I think. Because that's when, you know, I started, you know, get, I started college and... Uh... Come on. Sorry for me. Yeah, it was the paper I was doing throughout college. When starting college, so that was, a. Uh... Was a very uh, some time of very much starting something new because, in a weird way, like, and this is something that's quite you know like interesting. 
you know, the college that I go to is the first time that I've ever, you know, in a long time gone somewhere and no one's ever, you know, been there that I knew. Because, because, you know, every time, ever since, you know, I joined, like, the primary school I went to, since then, which was, like, like, probably, like, ten years ago, near enough, Actually, ten, 10 years ago, like, by this time, but it was the first time that I went somewhere, somewhere because, like, you know, I'd went to, like, I'd changed secondary school, but, you know, other people that I knew were there, so it was sort of, you know, I kind of had company, but it was the first time that I went, that I was going to a place, and, you know, the students there didn't know my name, didn't know who I was, you know, and that was great, that was great, you know. I also, I also, uh, before that at least was started, you know, I started, fer you know, I started therapy at the time. I believe I started therapy during, like, after, uh, like, when did I start doing that? I think it was... Yeah, yeah, I was I was doing therapy at therapy at the time, where very much that was the that was the most important thing I had to do, and it was the most healthiest thing I had to do, as a person because, as I had said about uh, doing YouTube, like it was it was my my escape, but from past times, like I realized that some stuff that the stuff that I try to escape from always comes back to me and I had been on waiting waiting list for this therapy you know it was for you know PTSD which I don't think I ever really spoke about but I I had P PTSD I still have PTSD it's not as severely as bad because when doing this therapy it was it was a you know I had a really lovely therapist I loved you know, I, you know, I, not loved, but I, in, but I, I enjoyed that ability to kind of, because I'd, be, I'd had counselling before, I'd had, you know, like, you know, people, but I never felt that they truly ever really gave me the, the time of day, it was all sort of kind of like, you know, oh, you know, like, everyone has problems, pal, you know, buck up, chump, and, you know, it never really put me off therapy. But it kind of was the thing where it's just kind of like, are you just listening to me just to sort of kind of as a muse? Because really, I'm not getting any, you know, any feedback from you about what's going on in my life. You know, because, like, it just wasn't, just wasn't, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't, just didn't feel right until, you know, I had this, I had this specific, you know, therapist. And, you know, she gave me feedback on, you know, the, the things I told her and stuff like that, and she really kind of opened a lot of things about the things going on at my life, in my life, and the stuff that I was dealing with when it came to the night terrors and stuff, and I soon, like, I have a good, you know, I'm not on medication for it, I have a very good, you know, you know, but life kind of got a lot better after leaving secondary school, to me. It was sort of kind of like having to go through a very much a long haul, where it's just kind of like, well, if you want to be free, you've got to earn it. You've got to, you know, do, you've got to kind of, you know, try and repair what you've still got with your life in a way. And I did that, and, you know, got out at the exact right time. You know, I, I say that with a lot of, you know... I don't say that with a lot of, like, dramatism. Because it's not, like, my life, my life to me is not a drama. I kind of, it is what it is. And it is a very, you know, my, my life's very, my life has been very complex and very diff, and a very, you know, strange time. But enough about that, but, but talking about therapy at the time, you know, I was going to therapy and very much, you know, because 
I I very much had like you know I went for like two sessions for college and I spoke spoke to them about you know the stuff going on and that I'd need these days off to have my ther these like times off to very much have my therapy sessions and they were like great cool and I told them things and they were very much like yeah we can do that you know and it was just they're like just so great there you know I like I like going to the college I'm going to at the moment but more but you know back onto the games though like around it like until dawn was you know a fun game to play what did i do after that fnaf 4 now this is going in this this was going past my one year anniversary of doing youtube but so fnaf 4 i only did like one official full episode of it and the funny thing about FNAF 4 that was very similar to FNAF 1 was that that I had that that, that one also gave me a nightmare as well and in fact it was actually before uh, a fan game called the joy of creation where like you know you had to like run and hide from the animatronics came out and in this and in this dream and in this nightmare I I used to live on an estate, and it was a very big estate, you know, crowded with a lot of houses. There's a lot of fun to play around in. You know, I used to, like, go around, like, curbs and corners and stuff. I had, like, alleyways and stuff, and, like, you could... It was a massive slope. You know, just a fun place to sort of... You know, group, group together. You know, Halloween was amazing, going to lots of houses, but... But talking, but on on with a nightmare, you know, it was dark, it was night, and I remember, like, you know, like, like, Nightmare Foxy chasing after me, and, like, Bonnie was, like, hiding around a corner, and I caught him, and he, you know, he, you know, he lunged for me and jump scared me, and that was truly terrifying. So that was, a, that was another quite <laughs> scary one, but it was really scary because... I lived in, in a house like that where it was, you know, like, really creaky and, like, like, the hallways were really, like, really dark and really faint and, you know, it was really just scary because it just felt so close to home. But, that, I also didn't, I also didn't, I didn't get as far with that because of just kind of boredom. I didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy... As I said, I don't enjoy the aspect of just having to be locked in one position and having to follow patterns. I click this button, I go over here. I click this button, I go over here. Oh fuck, I fucked up. Ah! And I get, you know. Yeah, but for now, for, like, some of the designs are... are cool. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think, you know... I think there was a big criticism on it is that like Scott went a bit too over overhaul on it of trying to make them too scary that it just didn't make them that scary it just made them you know look really like dangerous then scary but really really low But really though, that was just okay to play. Okay. Bendy and the Ink Machine. Now that one was a lot of fun to do. I liked playing that one. Uh So with Bendy and the Ink Machine it was a, it was very it was actually quite fun to do because it was very cartoony because it was about cartoons coming to life stuff like that and the whole thing about you know like the ink and the characters and you know all of it you name it it was just truly 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 in my opinion fantastic to, to play you know i felt that you know like you know the like the enemies were unique to themselves it, it didn't you know it didn't feel it didn't have to, you know, you know, it didn't have to feel the need to use jump scares like other, 
other, you know, like horror games where it was just scary because of what was happening around you, of, you know, being chased by, you know, a projector man and, you know, like having to avoid, like, the ink creatures and the whole, you know, aspect of, you know, the whole, the whole, you know, inspiration of the Walt Disney Company around it and just really, really cool stuff. In my opinion. So yeah, so that was that's what I had to say about bending the machine. Even better, Walking Dead season one. This was another playthrough that I did when I was very sick. Very similar to what what happened with what I did with Ghostbusters. So I I became so very much I I had become ill course and you know I was at home on my own and I decided to so you know my mum had got me you know bought me a game and stuff and I just I I'd, I'd picked The Walking Dead season one because I thought it because I'd seen because I remember like watching like playthroughs of like you know of those Telltale series and it, it's also one of my one of my one of my favorite games to to have done how that game, similar to Last of Us, still brings me out with a lot of emotion. And just, you know, I loved, like, you know, the whole thing about, you know, Lee. Of the character of Lee, of very much, you know, starting out as a arrested convict for killing, you know, his... Did, what, did he kill, like, his wife and the person that she was cheating with? Or did she kill just the person who she was cheating on him with a very much of do it of very much you know a man who was a teacher commits a violent act and you know is on on his way to prison and then next thing you know like the driver crashes into a zombie and she and he's stuck in the zombie apocalypse and find and, and finds a little girl and kind of holds and very much, you know, becomes responsible for, her. you know, an absolute stranger kind of going out of his way, showing that that what he did can still be redeemed, and having the aspect of very much having to be, you know, like I remember, like there was times when, like you know, y you could be confronted. Uh, by certain people when about certain things you did, and if you would, if in you know, if you were to tell Clementine the truth or what happened or the kind of the aspect of very much, do I raise you as a survivor? Do you know? Should I raise you to 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 be a survivor or do or can I still raise you to be a kid and having to hold that perfect balance of very much, still allowing her that chance to become a child. To be a child, but also leaning in the aspect that you know there'll come there'll come a day where, of course, you know that Lee wouldn't be there. Which eventually, you know, like I don't if you don't want to if you don't want to spoil the ending, I'll give you five seconds to skip. At least just skip, like I'd say, just just like forty seconds like 40 seconds ahead so very much good right so Lee does die and you get the choice and very much Lee very much tells her you have to shoot me or I'll turn and you know it's really really sad it truly truly did like you know it was it was similar to what you know when Sarah got shot in The Last of Us where you know I truly got very Teary. I don't know what it is with like you know with like young kids, you know like being you know hurt or being you know forced to do something that gets that like really like gets to me. But it, it but it does it does you know because I think that I in a way the way I the way I think about it about myself is that but the reason why I am that way is because. 
and in other ways, like I went for that myself, not having to like shoot a person, but very much being forced to do things and being having to, you know, you know, you know, I always felt very vulnerable as a child. Sadly vulnerable, but but addition to what I'm saying about the game, you know, it was it's an absolute fantastic game. It was one of the best playthroughs, another one of my best playthroughs that I think I've ever done. I think that it was also like one of those option games where I felt like I didn't, I was not, I was never disappointed with my choices. That my choices made sense for the way I wanted Lee to be to towards Clementine and the way that I wanted you know Clement because really because it's because the season two which I played where the reflections of what you did as Lee with Clementine will reflect in season two depending on what happened and this should and before I even did season two I did the Walking Dead's 400 Days DLC. Now that one, that one was an absolute waste of time. It led nothing of the story. It completely, you know, it it only felt like a centerpiece to uh, one 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 of those characters that being Bonnie, of leading to some to a group that was involved in season in season two. Where you played as these characters who, you know, had their own stories to tell. Which is something that's interesting. But then, at the end, the woman that's looking at the pictures of these people says, Oh, do you want to come with me? And they're all like, Nah, no, I won't. You know, I'm not coming. I thought it was mostly because of, my cho of the choices that I, that I made for them. As people. And that's why I think, like, I really was, like, disappointed by it. Because it didn't lead to anything. It didn't, you know, make anything of what, of what, you know, of what that DLC was just trying to do. It felt like a waste, really. Come on, get stuff. Get stuff. Complete utter waste. But. On that, on that hand, you know, it was, it just was, it just was what it was, really. Okay. So, Walking Dead Season 2. I'd say about Season 1, it was, you know, it, it was emotional. I felt with Season 2, it also was emotional in the choices that you made. With, you know, having to, not as emotional as the first season. I think the first season really captured... Enough of that emotion to kind of, you know, round, kind of round off, like, a, like its story. But with season two, we're very much, you know, going with the decision of, you know, of killing the people that very much, you know, cared for Clementine after the ending of season one. Don't want to spoil it if you plan on playing it, but after the ending of season one, where I felt that it should have been that... That they did, that they did, and that it was an awesome, like, story choice of very much. With the, the people that, you know, are left with Clementine. Of uh, Omid and Krista being, you know, very much, I think, like, yeah, killed off in the beginning. Where, you know, Clementine is completely alone. And, like, comes across, and comes across these, you know, goes on her own advent, goes through an adventure on her own. Independently. And, you know, having to very much justify the thing of, you know... Because in the game, she comes across a dog. And you have a choice to either feed the dog. Or... Or, you know... Or you can feed the dog some of it. And... Or you can refuse a dog. And the dog will get... Will very much, you know... Expose... Very much, you know... Like, show, like, an interesting point of the zombie apocalypse of very much the impact on the animals, of them very much becoming savage from hunger. Where she very much, you know, gets beat, 
bitten by it, and then she cut, she gets discovered by another group of survivors, and she very much has to like justify that she's not been bitten by like a zombie, or a walker as they call it. That they haven't been, that she hasn't been bit by a walker, and also the uh, the whole idea of very much you know whose side are you on, who you know as a kid, just as a kid of very much you know. Are you on this person's side because one character that you thought was dead from season one comes back and and they and you know very much over time like they they very much make decisions that you can either choose to go on the people that you knew from your past or the people people you knew from your present and where your loyalty lies and where and how just how how you feel as a person. That's something that I think that season two did better than season one. Both very much, you know, choosing your own politics really about how you felt about someone someone's actions. You know. So so that and. And we're coming up to the final game of FNAF Security Breach. Three FNAFs in, in a single episode. Who would have known? So FNAF Security Breach. What can I say about FNAF Security Breach? That one was was fun to do. I never finished it, but it was fun to do. Because I, it was something that I think that, that I liked about that one was because it had the... The free roam aspect of very much, you know, of the survival horror, very much, you know, trying to get, you know, get into one place through another and trying to avoid like the staff bots who would, you know, alert one animatronic to come up, to come after you. I didn't like the whole aspect of them, you know, of of uh, of them jump scaring you and then that's it, you're done. That's the one thing that I don't really like about 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 that FNAF, I don't really like that about any of the FNAFs, really. Or very much, you know, going, Oh no, they they came close to me and they caught me. Ah, they didn't even hit me or get the, get that chance. But, I think that's what FNAF's about. But, uh... But also, I did like the aspect of, you know, you could, like, use Freddy. You know, Freddy was your friend and, you know... And they, and they could never, you know, they never were hostile to Freddy. And the, you know, the aspect of, you know, having, of having to, you know, like, hide, or, you know, try and navigate areas from, from, you know, away from the staff boss, which was fun, for a bit, I didn't like, I didn't like, uh, the whole idea of very much, you know, of a staff boss, I felt like there were far too many of them, I think the game would have, you know, of just, just, you know, been a lot more funner in my opinion if they didn't use staff bots in like you know like ta in like you know areas where you could have just where it was just you and the animatronic where they could look for you themselves that was just how I felt about it but uh but, play but you know doing that game was fun but it just wasn't as f it just kind of got spoiled for me. It was like kind of this isn't worth it. It's I I've kind of I've kind of you know I kind of, I felt that I kind of had went my went the distance. So yeah, so that's really my whole first year on YouTube summarized in a way. I might continue talking you know doing the podcast about talking about like other games and other things. I might do, I don't know, like, I, I, I'd say that this one, this one, this series probably does not have a sell-by date, you know, I can sort of kind of, like, stop when I want to, but, you know, I, I like, to, I like talking about, you know, the different aspects of, you know, my so-called career and what I've done as a creator and also as a, you know, just as a human. Because I said that I said this at you know I I meant to say this at the beginning of uh, of doing these podcast episodes is that 
this is something to be used to talk up to very much, you know, to be remembered by someone to very much, you know, how my feelings on on these games, because they were just games, but they were also like a period piece for me. They were also, you know, that that idea of very much, you know, of what is beyond me, really. What can be, you know, possible for me, if you know what I mean. And how, and my different feelings as, as time has changed about, you know, what I've done and what I've said in certain things. And I have touched touched upon, you know, the different subjects of, you know, of, of you know, you know, some of the stuff that I said without ever thinking about it. And also, like, I don't want to give myself that credit by saying, like, what a good boy I am for, you know, reflecting on the things that I've done. That's not my intention. My intention is not to... Is to not, uh, it's not romanticise anything I've done, or anything I've talked about. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So... Yeah, so, really... Uh, yeah, at the end of it all, you know, you know, it's just, you know, I'll always remember the great times I had. I'll always remember, you know, the, f you know, the feelings I had at the time of, you know, doing these things and, you know, realising how much growth I've brought into the channel and how much I've, you know, br just done, how much I've done because, like, I even said this to, you know, Lucifer over the podcast, is that, like, I never intended to do as many videos as I've done. I just got, I just, you know, it's just what I did, you know, it's just how much I made, you know, in amount of time using the time I had because di the difference was, was that, you know, this, you know, especially the school I was the school I was in, you know, like, I didn't, you know, because I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any, you know, like, social friends. I had friends there. I was friendly with people. But they weren't social friends. They weren't people who was just like, oh, you want to go hang out down here? And they weren't, they weren't like that. They were very much like, you know, all right, see you tomorrow. Kind of, kind of like, kind of like, you know, like a work buddy, really, you know. You'd never ever, like, you know, see each other outside of work, but you would see each other, you know more in the workplace which you know I don't I don't you know I get it some people aren't you know that up for you know socializing and to doing you know such things and I understand you know I respect respect that but you know as as someone who very much wished that he had you know such things because even when I, but even when I had friend groups you know they they don't want they don't want to hang out with me they don't want to you know be around me they never I was never invited to things I was never you know asked to to you know go to things which I don't expect to you know to be you know like I was no, I never expected to you know to be like you know informed about everything my friends are doing if they don't want want me to hang out that's fine but you know when they were you say well you know like you're not really our friend. Because you hang out, well, I well I would hang out with you guys, but you guys don't want me to hang out, and that's just how it was. But so I'll just I'll just end it here because I'll ramble on about everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode of the podcast. If you enjoyed, please you know stay tuned for the next episode if there is one. Bye.